active high buy stable. Here's a simple block diagram showing uh, the SR buy stable with the inputs S and R and the outputs are Q and Q bar. I've got a table showing all the combinations of inputs and I've got a timing diagram that we're going to construct. Initially we don't know what Q and Q bar are. They could be in any state when we switch on. If I make S go high, this is going to get us into the set state, which means that Q is going to be set high, as we've shown the diagram, and Q bar is going to be set low down there. I'm going to make S go low. This is known as the no change state. Q stays high, Q bar stays low. I'm going to make R go high now, which is the reset state. Q is going to be reset low, which means that Q bar is going to go high. And we see this on the diagram. R goes high, makes Q go low, and Q bar go high. R goes low again, back to the no change state, so no change in the output. And I'm going to make S go high again, and that just makes Q go high and Q bar go low. I haven't covered the not allowed state, where both inputs are high, because it depends on the construction of the buy stable, uh, depending on which logic gates are used inside and uh, its internal wiring. So we tend to keep away from uh, both inputs being high. We call that a not allowed state. Now this particular one that we've got on the spec is made up of two NOR gates. And we've got uh, this NOR gate feeding into this one, this NOR gate feeding back here. So this feedback between the two is going to be important. So first of all, let's assume that both inputs are low. We don't know what the outputs are. They could be in either state. We're going to make S go high. So S goes high. Going onto the truth table, whenever S is high, we know that Q bar is going to be low. So we can say Q bar is low. Looking at this logic gate, R is low, Q bar is low. So both inputs are low, which means that the output, which is Q, is going to be high. So the output is high. Let's make S go low. So if S goes low, we've now got a naught and a 1 going into this gate. So a naught and a 1. In order for Q to change, the output of this logic gate will have to change, and then the output of this logic gate will change. Each one will take a few nanoseconds. So we can assume at the moment that this changes that this is still high. So Q bar stays low. And then we've got a naught and a naught going into this other logic gate, meaning that Q stays high. So that is the no change state. Let's make R go high. When R goes high, it just means that Q is going to go low. It doesn't matter what Q bar is, Q is going to go low. So Q goes low. We've now got two noughts going into this logic gate, which means that Q bar is going to go high. Let's return R low. Now because Q bar is high, and this feeds back into this one, it's going to hold Q low. So we've got a naught and a one going in, a naught coming out. And we've got a naught and a naught going into this logic gate, which means that Q bar stays high. So it's the feedback between the two NOR gates that means we get the no change state. And if we make S go high again, we've got a one and a naught going into this logic gate. Whenever we've got a one going in, that means that the output's going to be naught. Naught and a naught means that the output's going to be a one. 